Uh, Bobby, I forgive you for everything you've done, you know. And I've been there for hours trying to figure out how he did what he did. It's absolutely gorgeous. The sexiest thing, I think, is um, his hair. Some people say he's dead. Actually, I uh, can't think of it. I've still got a tab running for him. Thank Thank Turn off the camera. Tonight, we examine Bobby Tender and the truth behind his legendary life. A man rising from humble beginnings to a performing artist, star of international fame and actor. Uh, we will talk to friends, fans. So what's your favorite spot here at Hollywood Boulevard? Oh, Bobby Tender. And people who never knew Bobby Tender, but who like to appear in these kinds of documentaries. We will try to uncover his whereabouts today and find out if the rumors about his death are real. It all started here. Nökke is a typical rural village in Finland where life has gone on unchanged for years and years. In this humble cottage, Robert Aaron Tenderloin was born. Here he was raised by his loving mother as the youngest child of 17 brothers and sisters. Uh, his mother told Robert that his father, Alphonse, had died several years before Robert was born, but that he had hoped Robert would venture out on a musical career. But it was when Robert bought an old guitar in the flea market that he knew he had found the instrument of his future. He attended school, but apparently with little success. We asked Bobby's old teacher what kind of a boy Bobby was during those early days. He was a charming boy, but uh, naughty. I know him well because he stayed at school more years than his classmates. He did sing during my lessons. That was disturbing, of course, but what the heck? Excuse me. Music while you work, I thought. But, uh, but you said he was naughty. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, once he drilled a hole to the girls' locker room and charged money from anyone who wanted a peek. But, uh, charming. During a student party, Bobby saw a performance by saxophone player Erik van der Wunder, and the two decided to form a group. For unknown reasons, the collaboration suddenly broke up. Bobby, on his way to Erik one day, took a taxi to the airport. Eric, deeply disappointed, is still waiting for that one perfect note he and Bobby so passionately searched for. It was here he came, in 1982, to the pop music capital of the world. Armed with nothing more than his trusty guitar and determined to do absolutely anything to be able to visit each and every pub in London. I don't suppose you'd like the world to know this, but uh, Bobby and I, at one point, just like that, okay. This is the pub where uh, Bobby Tender used to come every night. Yeah, Bobby, I remember him. He used to come in here all the time, buy everyone drinks. Actually, I uh, can't think of it, I've still got a tab running for him. August 1982, Bobby meets Danny Slabe. Danny Slabe couldn't, in fact, play an instrument, but he could wave his hands due to being a semaphorist in the Navy, so he got to play the drums. Now the search was on. Excuse me, sir. The Bobby Tinder special. Oh, thank you very much. And now the search was on for more band members. But uh, it took at least two long drinks before the rest of the band walked into the pub. 
George Steinberg Jr. managed to down three pints in 38 seconds, so it was decided that he would be suitable to play rhythm guitar. For lead guitarist, the forming band turned to Derek Stork. He had already been called the mother of all who like to think they play lead guitar as good as Hank Marvin. Completing the picture was Sam Hoover, who the four lads later found playing his Hammond organ in a bingo hall. In later years, he formed his own group, Eternal Erection, and became known as Rick Lover. Now, apart from having nowhere to play and actually no songs, the only thing missing was a money-making manager. Enter the shadowy figure of Helmut von Gratis, who up till then had gathered a small fortune selling time-sharing apartments in the industrial district of Torremolinos. On New Year's Eve 1982, Helmut von Gratis booked the band to play at the grand opening of the Pizzeria Fino. That night, the secretary of record producer Benjamin Donnell happened to pick up a pizza in the restaurant. She convinced Donald to publish the first single, which, to everybody's surprise, became a smash hit in London clubs. Bobby Tender managed to record his first hit here in this uh, so-called studio, which actually is a closet behind a restaurant kitchen. Bobby Tender had hit the big time. At last, he received the recognition all deeply serious artists strive for. Endless parties, girls willing to do anything, anytime, and at any place. We asked Sam Hoover about those days. He was doing it. Bobby Tender, he was doing it. Yeah, everybody know. You know, Bobby Tender, he was the main man. <laughs> Bobby! How could you describe the music? Ah, uh, the music, yeah, it was some, some kind of mixture of uh, lounge and uh, techno, I think, yeah. Techno, yeah. techno, this was 20 years ago. Well, shit, you know, time flies. <laughs> Do you know where Bobby Tenner is today? Bobby Tenner, he went to the bar, I think, uh, for a bit. Bobby? Excuse me. Is, is it Bobby? Uh, excuse me, but Bobby Tenner has been gone for five years. Yeah, all right. Well, you know, you know, as I said, time flies. <laughs> Some flames and fire. One hit followed another. Life was smiling at Bobby. You're believing on a liar. Ooh, if you stay, you take the heat. Got yourself on the driveway. With a suitcase and no hand. There's a new day Ooh, when love 
lovers gone, don't stay, you just walk on back. Let the others keep on talking, walk on back. All I can do is cry over you. Forever, I will be true. Finally, Bobby Tender had the means to repay his mother for all those wonderful childhood years. He bought her her own mansion. And just like Elvis had Graceland, now he had his Tenderland. Unfortunately, due to coming problems, Bobby did eventually not have the money to keep the place in shape. In London, very famous, and with endless possibilities waiting for him, Bobby Tender suddenly pulled the same stunt he had during school. Without a word, he suddenly took off and left for the United States. To find out why, we turn to George Steinberg, executive at a big business consulting company. Why did the shaking legs break up? Well, we had a couple of good years together and these things that just happened. How, how do you mean, happen? I don't really want to talk about it. Why, why do you think Bobby Tender has disappeared completely? Why don't you ask him? Last time I heard him, he was living on the French Riviera. Here, on the lovely French Riviera, we can... <coughs> because of the not-so-warm welcome, we decided instead to continue our research. We followed Bobby Tender's trail in the United States during the mid-80s. Bobby enjoyed considerable success, but very soon Bobby Tender found himself going around in circles, his career going nowhere fast. And it was here he came, full of hope, full of dreams, and full of himself. It was in this office building I spoke to Metro Golden Mayo, the locally world-famous film producer. I, of course, knew right away we had a major talent on our hands. At the time, we tried to book him in some musical films, you know, the sequel to The Sound of Music, that would be Goats and Lederhosen, and the hard rock musical, Stinging Me with Pain. Well, I'm afraid nothing ever came of those. Eventually, we did manage to get him some minor parts. He played the hand in The Hand That Rocks the Cradle, and he played the hand in The Hand in the Window, and he also got the role of the hand in The Invisible Hand. Of course, you couldn't see much of him in that when you understand. By then, teaming up with another producer, Bobby Tender finally got a part where he could appear in full figure. Uh, due to his suitable hairstyle, he landed a part as Bobby, in the long-running TV series, Salad. And it was in Dallas where I spoke to the actress Darlene. What was your first impression of Bobby Tender? Well, the first time I saw him on the set for Salad, that's where I saw him, that was the first time. I thought he was just beautiful. He had this long hair, and so I waited around until after the, the, they were done, and I asked him if he wanted to go out on a date, and which was very bold for me at that time. And he was just, just amazing. He was just wonderful, and he just really influenced my life and gave me encouragement to go on to the theater. And um, I actually um, lost my virginity to him as well. Bobby slowly realized that movies would not be his big thing, and he returned to songwriting. He decided to journey to the roots of his music, to Memphis. There he met Bob Ribbons of Top Top Z. Would you say uh, he influenced you, or did uh, 
did you influence him? Well, at this party, he stepped right through one of my guitars and I gave it to him. What was his name again? Tender. Bob Bobby Tender. Bobby Tender. Turn off the camera. To earn some money, Bobby composed a ballad for a TV commercial. During a session in Memphis, Bobby recorded Daytime and immediately caught the attention of several producers. In the spring of 1985, Daytime was released as a single and it became Bobby's biggest hit ever. There's no one to blame It's always the same around me Shadows of blue Dancing with you And though my heart aches It gives and it takes No one No one would do No one but you And my heart keeps crying Due to his contract, however, almost all of the money went to the company who paid for the commercial. Disappointed, Bobby left Memphis with empty pockets. And it is at this point that his trail gets weaker and weaker, an amateur shot, this time from Las Vegas, where Bobby evidently came to recharge his batteries. We know he visited this chapel several times with different women. However, as far as we know, none of the visits led to marriage. Through the chapel owner, we got some interesting information. He showed us some home video footage taken from a motel nearby. Good buddy, Bobby Tender, stayed here from time to time. He's quite an elusive fellow, usually favors the same room, it's room 108. He has even written a uh, very, very special song in that room. You, you're talking about the song In My Heart, then? Yes, I am. No more worries of tomorrow Though my mind aches with sorrow Cause you're gone from my arms But you're in my heart In my heart Let's talk about Despite being an enormous worldwide hit making over 20 million dollars, 
in my heart turned out to be a financial disaster for Bobby Tender. Uh, due to a clause in his original agreement with Shaking Legs manager Helmut von Gratis, almost none of the proceedings from In My Heart came to Bobby Tender. Uh, Mr. von Gratis, Mr. von Gratis, please. Uh, is it true that you made 20 million of In My Heart? Nine, nine, nine. You know, Bobby, Bobby Tender's song. You made 20 million. Yeah, yeah, Bobby Tender, nine, it, it went total expenses. E expenses? Yeah, expenses. Why, why then do you think he disappeared? No idea, I have no idea. Nope. Bye. Bye. In fact, Helmut von Gratis went off with all the money and Bobby, bitter with life, decided to disappear from the face of the earth. Actually, just uh, a few minutes before he was to leave his hand and foot imprints here uh, in front of the Chinese theater on Hollywood Boulevard. Although the prints never were made, Bobby's fans somehow can see them on that empty spot. So what's your favorite spot here at Hollywood Boulevard? Oh, Bobby Tender. Uh, absolutely, Bobby Tender. <laughs> Despite the many rumors about Bobby Tender being dead, most fans refuse to believe that. Wow, we all love Bobby Tender. He's one of our favorite rock stars. I don't believe he is dead. You see, I think he's just kind of he's just kind of out there watching what goes on. Absolutely adore Bobby Tender. And Bobby, if you're out there, please let us know you're safe because we're distraught. Bobby Tender will never die. He is absolutely luscious. gorgeous, scrumptious, scrumptious, avenue. I remember way back when I first started playing, and I'd be there for hours trying to figure out how he did what he did. You know, I never could, but he was my all-time inspiration, Bobby Tender. Bobby, Bobby, where did you go? records Bobby such a long time ago oh yeah meeting fans like this gave us strength in our mission to find Bobby because there certainly were days when the motivation wasn't there why do I think Bobby Tender disappeared It didn't make it any easier that reports of Bobby's whereabouts and amateur footage came in from all over the world. I want you, baby, you want me. What a pretty lovely couple we could be. Tell me why, why, where did I go wrong? Where did I go? One of the leads led us to the French Riviera and a very famous beachfront hotel. We found an inside source. Uh, oui. could, could I ask you a few a few questions? Oui, oui. Uh, do Do you know Bobby Tender? Oui, oui. Uh, is he actually living in in this uh, this hotel right now? Oui. So he he is. Oui, oui. He has not left for London. Oui, oui. Oui. So he did leave for London. Ah, oui. And is not living in this hotel right now. Oui, 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 oui. Oui, oui, oui. According to another rumor, he actually died here in 1992 
and is buried in this lovely graveyard in Saint Paul de Vence. No, no. Tender. T E N D E R. E-R. Rumors about our search spread, and suddenly many people contacted us. Hello, my name is Sven Dolm. I really knew Bobby Tender. So he was here at the clinic. This is a clinic for sexually overactive people, as myself. For how long uh, did uh, did Bobby stay here? Not long enough. Because this place made him worse. With all the, the young nurses around. This hidden side of Bobby's life is something that ex-band member Sam Hoover knows very well. I, I know how that... He even did my... Uh, my girl, you know, give me the light, please, yeah. You know, Bobby, you know, uh, with the friends, you know, we have to mess around with the wives of his friends, you know. Damn. Bobby Tender, you know, I, like, I think therapy is good for him. Yeah, Bobby, what, what take good you, care of him, Bobby. What do you think about him today? He's still a friend of mine. Uh, uh, Bobby, I forgive you for everything you've done, you know, for everything. I, I hope therapy will do you good, because you need it. <laughs> But it was in London that we finally had an encounter of our own. An ordinary documentary shoot was interrupted in a surprising and shocking way. Good God, it's him! Despite all the effort, we don't really seem to be getting anywhere. But uh, as always, it's uh, important to remember that uh, life can be a song and a song can be your life. Bobby Tender's lasting legacy will be that he proved that big things can start from small places. And he leaves a string of lovely songs which keeps his fans hoping for a comeback. Maybe in the end, when the day is done, the ultimate answer can only be found in one place. Lekke Finland.